There are two kinds of type in Illustrator, area type, like right here, which refers to paragraphs or blocks of text, and point type, like you see here, which refers mostly to single lines of type, like you would use for a name or a decorative title. In this lesson, we'll start with area type. And first, go up to your Workspaces button and pull down to select the Typography workspace, which will put type panels front and center. And if you're working in version CS3, you would go up to your Window menu and pull down to Workspace and then select Type from there. And the panels that we'll be focusing on the most in this lesson, of course, are the Character panel and the Paragraph panel. Now the simplest way to start with area type is to go over to the tool panel, select the type tool, and then go back to your artboard and click and drag out a type box. And this is a box that becomes a container for the type. And when I release, I can see I have a cursor here and I can just begin typing. And I'm not a very good typist, so I'm not gonna go any further with this, but I will delete this box now and show you how to take type from another document. So first, I'm going to delete this text box by toggling to my arrow tool, hitting Command or Control on a PC, and I just select the, the type box anywhere on the type or on the center point here, and then hit Delete. Now I can navigate to another open document on my desktop, and in this case, this is a Pages document, and I will just click and drag to select the type. Command C or Control C on a PC, then navigate back to the Illustrator window. Once again, I'll place my type tool, drag out a text box, and then paste. And you can see my text box is too small to contain all the type that I copied, and that's indicated right here by this little red plus sign, and it's telling me there's more type within this text box. So I will just once again toggle to my black arrow tool and I can stretch this text box, select it again and resize it and you'll see how the type just flows at the size of the box. With the text box selected I can also go and change the type options here in the character panel and reduce the size of the type and the line spacing and of course the font here, and then there are options for kerning and tracking. And there are more options in this panel. If I just go up to the little menu here and choose Show Options, a few more options drop down here, and these are all about the scaling of the font itself. You can stretch its width or stretch it vertically. And also, as we've come to expect, with the Type tool selected or Type selected on the artboard, you'll always find type options that you can work with up here across the top in the control bar and you can access a drop down character panel just by clicking on the link and there's also a paragraph panel as well these go away as soon as you select anything else but of course panels over here stay open as long as you leave them open now let's take a look at the paragraph options I'll select my text box again toggling to the arrow tool and here I can choose different alignments, right alignment, left alignment, center alignment, and justify type. These two options right here will allow you to adjust the margin between the text box and the type itself. And you can see by default there is no margin. The text is flush to the text box. And this option right here allows you to change the indentation of the paragraphs. And you can see that change here as I click. And you can also use the eyedropper tool right here in the tool panel, sample the text options from another box of text. So you can see here, now that I'm hovering over this other text box, a little T appears over my eyedropper tool. I have my text box selected here, and I'm just going to click, and I've transferred all these same type options to the text in this box. Then I'll toggle again to the arrow tool to make sure I have this box selected, and I'll go back and shrink the type a bit so that it fits once again in my text box. With area type in Illustrator, you can use any closed path or shape that you can create as a container for type. Just draw a circle, for instance, 
then grab the type tool click on the path and you'll see the cursor appears at the top here I'm just gonna paste some type in and here it is in my circle from here I can just make some adjustments and toggle to my arrow tool to move it around a bit and now I'll switch to my arrow tool using the keyboard shortcut V and select and delete all of this other type so I can make more room for my circle now I want to show you something about scaling area type now we saw before that if I use the black arrow I can resize stretch this circle into an ellipse and the type automatically flows to fit the new shape and you can see the point size remains constant. If you want to scale the type itself and the shape that contains it at the same time, you would use the scale tool. I'll toggle to my arrow tool, select the type box, toggle back to my scale tool, and now I can just resize this ellipse and the type inside using the scale tool. Let me hit undo a couple times here. Now, if I want to keep the scaling of my type intact, if I want to keep it original to the font that I'm using, then I would hold down the shift key, of course, and that will constrain the proportion. So now my oval is staying the same proportion and my font is staying the same proportion as before. If I don't hold down the shift key, of course, then I'll change the proportions of the ellipse and at the same time I'm stretching the type here so you can see the horizontal scaling of the type has changed. If you like the new shape of the ellipse and you want to get your type back to the proportions of the original font then you can use this menu right here to go back to 100 percent and it's again true to the original font. And Now I can toggle back to my arrow tool, hold down the shift key and resize the shape again.